everybody and welcome to How To Videos with Dr. Amy Gates. This video is going to focus on how to use SPSS to create your own variables and then to populate those variables with data. Once we have those variables populated with data, we'll practice creating some summary statistics, also called numerical measures, and we'll also create a couple of quick graphs. To create a variable, we first have to go to the lower left and we have to click on Variable View. When I click on Variable View, it changes my blank SPSS sheet to allow me to create a variable by entering its name, its type, and so on. Now, when you get started, if for some reason you open SPSS and you already see data and you're looking to create a new variable and you want a blank data, sh data sheet for SPSS, all you need to do is click on File, New, and Data, and it will create for you a brand new data sheet, just like this one. Okay, well, I'll close it. I already have one. Now, you can name your variables anything you want. Let's say I want to create a variable called religion. This variable is definitely going to be a discrete variable. It's qualitative, and it's going to be nominal. It's good to know what your variable types are. When I click next to my variable name, SPSS automatically fills out what are called default values here. The first thing we can change if we want to is the type of our variable. If I click on the blue option button, I can actually change it to a string, I can change it to scientific notation, and so on. But I want to leave it as numeric, and I don't actually need any decimal places, and we'll see why in a minute. Notice when I put zero decimal places, it changed this to zero. This is how many digits can be in my name or number or my data. Eight is fine. And the label is just another name. I'm going to use the same name. Sometimes if the name of your variable is super long, you can make your label a little bit shorter or a little bit easier to remember. But in our case, it's fine to use the same name. Now I'm going to click next to a button called Values. Right now it says None. But I don't want to be none. I actually want to create categories for the different religions that I'm going to investigate. So I'll click next to my none under values. And this allows me to create labels or categories for my religious groups that I want to investigate. For example, my first category might represent Christian. I add this in and I click OK. But wait a minute, maybe I want to investigate several religious groups. So I can change this anytime I want. Let's click it again. And let's make my second category Jewish. Okay, I'm going to add that in. And let's keep going. Let's create a third category. And we'll let this one be Buddhist. All right. Let's create a fourth category. We'll let this one be Islamic. And we'll create a fifth category, and we'll let this one be none specified. All right, that gives us five categories. Now, of course, we know we're not representing every religion in the world, but in our particular study, if we're asking people what their religious affiliation is, these are the choices that we're going to give them. Notice that I'm using numbers here to categorize each one of my religious groups. And I'll click OK when I'm done. Now, if I want to review these or change them or look at them again, I just click on that blue button here in Variable View. I can add another one, or I can click and remove any of the labels I have already. I don't need to deal with anything missing. I'm not worried about columns. But let me scroll over a little bit, because right here, the measure of my data is actually nominal. What does nominal mean? Well, it means that all of my categories are just labels. They don't have any order associated with them. Just because I have, for example, Islamic labeled as four and Buddhist labeled as three, Islamic is not greater than Buddhist just because four is greater than three. In other words, the numbers I'm using to categorize don't actually specify any true numerical value. They're just groups that I've labeled with numbers. And when that's the case, the type of data or the measure is called nominal. All right, well, that's my first variable. If I go back and click on data view right now, I can see that that variable has been added, and I can now enter data 
into this column. But before I do that, I'm going to add, create one more variable. Click on variable view. But this variable, I want to be something that's quantitative, continuous, and an actual numerical value. So let's do something completely arbitrary like GPA. A person's GPA is definitely quantitative. It has a quantity value. That's a numeric measure. I can keep my decimal places. GPAs often have decimal places. I can label it again as GPA. I don't need to create values because my GPA is a continuous data type in this case. It can, have, it can take on any single value between 0 and 4. So I don't want to categorize it like I would with a discrete variable because it's a continuous variable. And the measure is called scale. Whenever I have a continuous me measurement, that's how I note it. Now when we go back to data view, we can see that we have GPA and religion both listed here. Now when I fill in data for religion, remember that I've told SPSS I'm categorizing my religions from 1 to 5. Remember, 1 is Christian, 2 is Jewish, 3 is Buddhist, 4 is Islamic, and 5 is none specified. These are the five possible values that can go in my religion data set. Now I'm just going to make up a bunch of values, just completely arbitrarily. I am literally clicking numbers here. Okay. Now GPA, we noted as being a scale value. It's continuous. It can have any values that I want it to. I didn't specify. But you and I know that GPAs can be anywhere from 0 to 4. So I can have GPAs like someone maybe has a 3.54, maybe a 2.57, maybe 1.87, maybe 2.7. Just kind of creating. Maybe somebody has a 4.0, pretty impressive and so on. So here I'm just going to put in a bunch of GPAs. This is exactly how you enter data into SPSS. Okay. Now once I've created my variables, and I can create as many variables as I want to, I can determine the type I want them to be, I can label them, if they're discrete variables, I can create categories for them using numbers if I want to. I don't have to. And so on. Once I'm in my data view, I can enter values for those variables. And then finally, I can do some analysis. For example, I might be curious about different summary statistics for either religion or GPA. To calculate things like mean, median, mode, variance, standard deviation, min, max, and other summary statistics, which are also called numerical measures, I choose analyze, descriptive statistics, and frequencies. Once I choose this, a little box pops up and says, okay, which one of your two variables, or both of them, do you want to do your analysis on? Let's just start with religion. Let's move it over here. I know religion is a discrete variable, so when I click on statistics, I can choose different measures. Well, it's a discrete variable, so I know that the mean isn't going to be meaningful. It's not going to mean anything because my data is nominal. So if I take the mean of my data, the result gives me no information. Same with median. But the mode is actually a very helpful measure for data that's categorical. What will the mode tell me? It'll tell me in my particular data set which religious affiliation was the most selected. So I can click Continue, and I can click OK. Or if I want to, I can make a quick chart. This is a fast way of doing charts. The more involved way is to actually use the graph method. But I'm going to go ahead and click Charts. Let's make a quick bar chart of our data and click Continue and OK. So in this case, SPSS will run, and it calculated the mode for me, which is a 3. Remember, my data is labeled with numbers 1 through 5. The most frequently occurring value was a 3. So I can check back and see which religious group that was. And of course, my graph will tell me here, because my graph quickly added up and mapped all the different groups that I have. Christian, Jewish, Buddhist, Islamic, non-specified. We can see that in our group, 
the greatest number would be Buddhist, which is number three, and that's why the mode was three. So these are two methods to analyze things like discrete variables. Now, what about GPA? GPA is a continuous variable. So if I wanted to analyze GPA, I would do the same thing, descriptive statistics, frequencies. I don't want religion, I'm gonna put that back. I'm gonna grab GPA, click statistics. GPA is continuous. I can definitely calculate the mean, which is the average. That would be interesting information. I can get the median, which is the middle value. The mode probably won't give me any useful information. The mode is not very useful with continuous data. But the standard deviation and variance are interesting. So I'll click continue, and I'll make a really super quick chart too. I'll make a histogram with the curve, because that's interesting for continuous data. Something like a pie chart or a bar chart would not be appropriate for continuous data. Now I'll click continue and OK. Again, SPSS runs this and it tells me, OK, my mean GPA is about 2.9, my median is about a 2.76, and I've got my standard deviation here and my variance. My histogram also shows me pretty much the same thing that my summary statistics are telling me. Most of my GPAs are right here between 2.5 and 3.0. And I've got another bunch maybe between 3.5 and 4.0. This is not particularly bell curved. It doesn't really fit this curve very well. So I would not assume that the data I have is normally distributed. Although, and this is outside of the topic, GPA does tend to be normally distributed if you collect enough data. So this was a quick example of how to use variable view to create two variables how to use data view to populate those variables, and how to use analyze to calculate some numerical measures. Thanks for joining me.